But we begin tonight with Russia still listening and still interfering in our elections. That is what we learned when the Justice Department announced indictments and sanctions Wednesday in a scheme that sounds straight out of 2016. The DOJ charged two Russian media executives in an alleged plot to illegally funnel millions of dollars to right-wing influencers by way of a pro-Trump media outlet. Specifically, the department charged two employees of Russian-backed media company RT with, nearly 10 million, with a nearly $10 million plan to fund an unnamed Tennessee content creation company as one of their covert projects to influence American politics. The company's description matches that of Tennessee-based Tenant Media, according to a review by NBC News of details included in the indictment. In a related but separate legal action, prosecutors seized 32 Russian-controlled web domains tied to a broader Russian influence campaign accused of spreading propaganda through bogus news sites to American voters. An affidavit supporting seizing the domains showed information detailing a series of topics Russian actors wanted amplified in the influencers' content. Things like encroaching universal poverty, record inflation, the halting of economic growth, unaffordable prices for food and essential goods, risk of job loss for white Americans, privileges for people of color, perverts, and the disabled, constant lies of the U.S. political party administration about the real situation in the country, threat of crime coming from people of color and immigrants, including new immigrants from Ukraine, overspending on foreign policy and at the expense of the interests of white U.S. citizens, constant lies to the voters by U.S. political party B in power. And last but not least, America is suffering a defeat despite candidate B's efforts. We are being drawn into the war. Our guys will die in Ukraine. Now, if that also sounds like a list of pro-Trump right-wing talking points or, frankly, your average day on Fox, it essentially is. But it also highlights how Russia launders its propaganda into the American psyche, especially through the use of social media, which is why tenant media came in handy. The indictment notes Company One, which describes itself as a network of heterodox commentators that focus on Western political and cultural issues, the exact same language used by tenant media on its website and social media channels, and identifies six commentators as its talent. The indictment doesn't name them, but tenant media has six right-wing YouTube commentators on its roster. Tim Pool, Benny Johnson, Dave Rubin, Taylor Hansen, Lauren Southern, and Matt Christensen. And you will be forgiven if right now you're asking yourself, who? Just know that some of them are prominent megalebrities. They adamantly deny involvement in posts on Elon Musk's ex-Twitter. Tim Pool said that he and others were deceived and were victims. Dave Rubin claimed he knew absolutely nothing about any of this fraudulent activity. The indictment does suggest the unnamed commentators were unaware that they were being paid by Russian efforts. But a look into the internet presence of some of these contenters, of some of these creators' content, shows what Russia was looking for. What else is going on with Ukraine these days? It's not just that we are funding the war. Everyone knows that we're funding a war, which you might argue if you're funding the war, if you're paying for the war, maybe that means you're in the war, but we've never actually gotten authorization for this war. Our leaders, leaders keep telling us that this is the most important thing in town. This is psychotic. Ukraine is the enemy of this country. Ukraine is our enemy being funded by the Democrats. I will stress this again. One of the greatest enemies of our nation right now is Ukraine. Ukraine is the greatest threat to this nation and to the world. We should rescind all funding and financing, pull out all military support, and we should apologize to Russia. Apologize to Russia. Of course, it's not like Russia had to pay everyone, since we all know there are elected officials willing to push the Kremlin, not the Kremlin line for free. Vladimir Putin has not said he wants to go march across Europe and take Europe. And, and the reality is Ukraine is not even a NATO member nation. But if you want to know something, Lloyd Austin and the others here, more than anything, want to send your uncles, your cousins, and your sons and daughters to the front lines in Ukraine. I will not vote for one more dollar to Ukraine. I will not vote for one more piece of materiel to Ukraine. 
We are far too entangled in this conflict. I believe we have extended this conflict. What's in America's best interest is to accept Ukraine is going to have to cede some territory to the Russians, and we need to bring this war to a close. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I know you might have been surprised not to see former Fox host Tucker Carlson in there, but he does make an appearance in the Justice Department's indictment, just not by name. The indictment reveals that one of the indicted RT employees shared a video of a well-known U.S. political commentator visiting a grocery store in Russia, a likely reference to Tuckum's infamous Moscow shopping trip in which he marveled how much better it was shopping in the dictatorship than shopping at home ahead of the interview in which he did everything but literally sit in Vladimir Putin's lap and hug him like he's Santa Claus. Later that day, a producer messaged the company founder saying, they want me to post this, adding, it just feels like over shilling. The two founders of the media company are also unnamed in the indictment, but Tenant Media is registered to two people named Liam Donovan and Lauren Chen. Chen was fired from her job as a commentator for right-wing Blaze Media. She had contributed to videos to its Blaze TV. It seems the reality of it all is you hear these narratives. Ukraine is our true enemy, or the economy is doing so terribly, it's in ruin, in spite of ample evidence to the contrary. How the white man is falling behind because the government is giving preferential treatment to blacks and brown people. Remember the twin boogeyman of DEI and critical race theory? You hear these things and you think, yeah, these are just right-wingers being the miserable wretches that they always are. When it turns out, they might also be getting cash apps from Mother Russia to say it. But it's not like some genius idea, right? The Russians are just banking on the things that right-wingers are already hopped up about in order to scare white American voters into voting for the candidate Vladimir Putin wants to win. And no surprise, his preferred candidate is this guy. Russia, you uh, you had a relationship with them and North Korea and the Mullahs. But Iran. nobody was tougher with Russia than me. Joining me now is David Korn, Washington bureau chief for Mother Jones and MSNBC political contributor and Anand Giridharas, publisher of the newsletter The Inc. and MSNBC political analyst. Thank you both for being here. David, I will, I will start with you. The, I am, it is sort of remarkable to see the complete capture of the U.S. Republican Party by pro-Russian interests. So this group that is now indicted, it's not like they had to work hard. The right has already been pre-captured uh, to the Russian side. But what do you make of this indictment and what it is revealed? Well, you know, we got to look at this a little bit in historical context. This isn't coming out of nowhere. This is now the third election in a row that the um, Russians have tried to intervene to help Donald Trump. They did it in 2016, and Donald Trump said it wasn't happening. He lied. He aided and embedded the attack. And the whole Republican Party, or most of it, and the conservative movement ended up agreeing with him because they didn't want to be caught cross swords with him on this point. So right there, he led them into this Russian denialism. And then in 2020, we kind of forget about this because Trump didn't win, but Ukrainian officials who were tied to Russian intelligence, according to whom? According to Trump's own Treasury Department, were putting out disinformation about Joe Biden and Hunter Biden. It didn't work, but it made the election close. And the right wing was amplifying this stuff, Rudy Giuliani and others, Fox News, over and over again. So the Russians have a pretty clear idea about how to play this. It's nothing new for them. They've had years of experience, and here they are out there with these right wing commentators, also with these websites that are out there and ginning up right wingers to push these talking points as we get closer to the election. It's um, it's, it's just been going on, and the right has just refused to acknowledge this. And for some, it's been very profitable to not acknowledge it. Yeah, and Anand, that's where I want to come to you, because, you know, you've tailed with some of these folks uh, who were annoyed that you were criticizing the, the billionaire class. But, I mean, it, the, the to me, getting at these people who a lot of people who are watching this show probably don't even know who Tim Pool and these people are, but that is because they are trying to capture a much younger demographic. They're sort of taking that Russian capture and then marketing it uh, down to younger and younger receivers of information. Yeah, you know, we have a we have a post up at the Inc. tonight trying to look at this 
indictment in a, in a larger light. Uh, and I'd say a couple things. First of all, there are a lot of things countries can do to each other, particularly when they're powerful countries like Russia. There's a, there's a big menu, right? A binders full of choices available to Vladimir Putin, right? You can take out power grids, you can do stuff on banking systems, you can bomb things, you can do assassinations, the whole slew of things. I think first we have to think about the fact that in these three elections, as David's talked about, basically the era we've lived in the last uh, decade plus, the Russian weapon of choice to sabotage the United States of America and push it into democratic decay is the inflammation of our discourse, right? I think that's really significant. Like, I don't think these operations necessarily have tilted elections or have that enormous an effect. We are, we have our own problems in this country that we don't need Russian help to, to create, but it is their judgment of our Achilles heel that is so revealing here. And when you look at some of these people, these very inflammatory people who, who they've been funding, um, it makes you realize, like regular people at home, you are being manipulated to hate your neighbor more than you otherwise would. You are being manipulated to feel like everything is hopeless. You are being manipulated into these positions. And in 2016, by the way, they, they did this to the left and the right, they, they, it, it, was, yeah. uh, it, it was all over the place. Um, and I think it actually fills me with a certain kind of hope that maybe this country is not as, you know, gone in terms of toxicity and the way we see each other and relate to each other as we perceive ourselves to be when we go online, when we, when we go on YouTube, uh, when we go on X. Maybe a certain amount of what has happened to us is this you know, forced inflammation from the outside, because it is their judgment that that, that way we relate to each other, that way we see each other, the way we talk to each other will ultimately bring us down.